Well, it's great to see a bunch of you guys. It really is a, a tough game. I don't want to take anything away from Texas. I thought they played hard uh, the way we, we knew it would be. And uh, uh, disappointed a little bit in our guys the way we didn't take shots early. And I thought we really got back on our heels. But obviously, I'm happy with the way that we fought to the end to give ourselves a chance to win the basketball game. And, but with that said, from our vantage point, we've got to get more consistent. We do have to do that. And uh, I told our team, too, that we've played enough games now that we don't need uh, learning more lessons about not understanding how you've got to play for 40 minutes on both ends of the court. You know, we're a good defensive team, and, you know, we did mix some things up tonight. But the pressure at the end is, you know, we, we knew we were going to bring it at some point in time, and I'm just glad with the way our, our guys went at it and fought and um, a lot of good things. Really happy for V.J. Bailey coming home and his determination and grit was, um, you know, I think if we picked a, a most light guy on our team, it would be V.J. I mean, our, his teammates love him to death, and for him, to, he made some huge plays there that, the uh, offensive stick back and in the charge that he picked up, but it's just his tenacity and and uh, but uh, on to the next and uh, we play again Tuesday night. But we've got to we've got to get more consistent, especially on the offensive end. We had guys turning down shots for what reason? I, I wish I know. Uh, I actually at the end of the game said the next guy that turns down a shot is coming out of the game, whether he you know makes it or not. But it, you better take it. And we finally got got aggressive and started playing with some force. Well, again, I've said for 17 just beautiful years here in Austin at this university and had the chance the last couple of days to see some people that I, I dearly love to death. And, uh, you know, I've kind of grown old with many of them. And, uh, but it, it was special. It, it really was. And I, and I certainly appreciate it. I, I certainly appreciate Chris Beard and, and, you know, two of my former guys are, you know, they're as much my guys as they are his guys. and. And everybody in, 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 in general, it was just a, uh, I, I really appreciate it. I, I really do and uh, appreciate the fans. But I also knew that once the ball got tipped up, it, it was time to try to win a basketball game. And uh, and uh, and then you totally get, get absorbed with that. But uh, I can only say I, I appreciate, you know, Chris and the basketball staff and Chris Del Conte and everyone doing what they did. It was, uh, I didn't expect it. Uh, I'd said for years I didn't want to come back. I didn't. I didn't want it to be about me. And but uh, it, it touched me. It did. And I, and I wouldn't be, uh, you know, uh, telling you the truth if it didn't. But seeing my former players, you know, Damian James, T.J. and James Thomas flew down, got in late this afternoon, and they're out there. I get to see a bunch of them. Brandon Mouton, it was here, and 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 the best part, truthfully, was seeing their families. And how these guys have grown up to be great fathers, and and uh, it's uh, as I talk about people here that I've grown old with. I've grown old, uh, grown old with some really terrific players too, and uh, it's special. And I'm I'm excited about Texas coming into the league because I'll get to, get to come back. I hope uh, if the good Lord's willing, and and uh, whenever that's going to happen, and because uh, it, it's a it's a special place. Obviously, the last year here in this building. Uh, a lot of memories, you know. Uh, I've seen shots like that fall at the end too against us. So <laughs> I was hoping that one would go in. But uh, again, and thank you all. I, I look out and see Kurt, all you guys. I mean, you guys were great to me, and um, we've grown old together. But uh, I, I said I'm 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 been truly blessed of the opportunity that I had here, and now being at Tennessee, working for a tremendous university, and a great just great leaders and. Uh, I don't know if anybody could have it any better than I've had it. We're right here and then the Rob. Well, technically only Kirk and Rosie got all the rest of us. <laughs> they're looking good, though. You know, they're looking good. What's up, liars? Well, Coach Royal told me one time that when you start getting old is when they start telling you. They, they, he, he used to say, people would ask him how he's doing. He said, well, I'm feeling good. And uh, then people would start saying to him, well, are, you know, are you looking good? He said, when they started telling me that, I knew I was getting old. <laughs> you know? What, what's up? You know, Caleb is special to me. He, you know, he's our first grandson. You know, I was here, I was here in, in Austin when my daughter and son-in-law, who I obviously love dearly, they, they knew before they 
ever got married, they, they knew they had a heart for adoption. They did not know it would happen as quickly as it did. They, uh, we had a, Austin Stone had a uh, guy come in from Uganda that was talking about there was a little young guy over in Uganda, Kampala, that was looking for a home. And I remember the uh, first time I saw him, I was at the base of the escalators at Austin Berkston Airport. And I saw him, he came down, he was 16 months old. And you know, he's got, he, they named him after me which uh, he's my guy and uh, I just love him to death. You know, there's nothing, I mean, he, he, know, he knows he's got me where he wants me to anytime, you know, but, uh, but it was his birthday yesterday. And, uh, and like I said, I, I'd been asked to play this game a couple years past, but I, I wasn't ready. But knowing that they're gonna close the building, I said, you know, I, we need to do this, not just for me, but for the University of Tennessee. Cause you know, we, you remember they, they came in here and, and you know, when I went to Knoxville, I heard if I heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times how they beat us with Kevin Durant, and I tell them all the time they didn't beat us. Uh, the referee called a five-second count, and I have it on camera today where he counted three times and blew the whistle. I said so they didn't beat us, but playing Texas is a, you know I mean they believe me I hear it all the time, but uh, uh, but yet um, that was the reason you know all that, but his birthday made it special too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Robin in the back. Coach, I, I would imagine you probably executed your defensive game plan pretty pretty well. I mean, how disappointing is it to hold in 52 points? Come out short? Well, you know, we, we knew, Rob, you, you know us as well as anybody, we knew we were going to play zone at some time. I, I kind of wish now that instead of just – you make I made my – if I don't make myself use it sometime on out-of-bounds plays, it's hard for me to go to it because I have so much confidence in our defense. And uh, – but we did it from out of bounds, and they scored some. They, you know, they were they had a tough time against uh, Oklahoma State with a zone. They had a tough time with pressure against Oklahoma State. Uh, we knew that at the end that we were going to stay with the pressure all the way through. When you know during the timeout, the coaches said to me, uh, "Coach, we got a two possession game. What do you do?" I said, "Exactly what we're doing. We're going to stay with it." But you, you know, uh, we're just I don't. I, I can't figure it out on offense. I think we're a good offensive team. I've seen us be. I, I just don't understand why guys that we really count on won't shoot shots when they need to, and it puts everybody back on their heels. But defensively, yeah, uh, you know, we thought we could, you know, we think we can guard most people we play, but uh, the free, free throws in the first half hurt us. You know, the play at the end, of the, it would have been a tie game at halftime. We shouldn't have put ourselves in that position there. We've done it twice already this year at half court at the buzzer shots. but. The way we came out of halftime is disappointing, but the way we closed, I mean, we had, think about it, we had our best shooter with a wide open shot at the top, of, you know, right off in the slot area, missed it, and then we executed our out of bounds play. Uh, you know, what we, we were planning on bringing it to half court because we did not think they would let us run by them like we did, and, and I told uh, Sakai when it comes in, if you got it, you go, if I don't think you got it, you don't worry about a timeout, I would call it. And, you know, he, he, I mean, we couldn't ask for a better look. And he and, and Sakai and the force we played with at the end, his force, I mean, all those guys out there at the end did a terrific job. Rick, uh, do you see a lot of similarities in your style and identity with Chris? And yeah, I, I, I do, Kurt, because, you know, he, he's a defensive-minded guy. He, tell, he totally is, and, you know, he's into it and rebounding. Uh, Taking care of the ball. I don't, I don't even have how many turnovers we had tonight, but uh, how many we have tonight? Uh, we had 11. They had 18, and uh, we didn't get much out. Of, again, the free throw line really hurt us tonight. What do we? I, we were five for 12, but gosh, I mean, it's the one and ones. They and they didn't do a much better job. I can't quite read it. I don't have my bifocals on, but I think they didn't. What were they? Six for? So it wasn't a very pretty display from the free throw line for either one of us, you know, and. But, uh, yeah, I think we're similar, similar. And you know what? I thought they played really well at uh, TCU. I thought they got it connected there and knew they would come in with that momentum and, and, and ride that. But uh, um, we uh, – yeah, I would say there's a lot of similarities in the, in the way we both, I think, see the game. Troy, right here. Rick, what went into the decision to sit Kennedy? Was it Kyle – you know, we, we even thought about there at the end, but it's just the fact that uh, – that that group was playing and, and uh, they actually wanted to stay like that. You know, they, they I asked them if, uh, when they were coming over, I said, anybody need a blow? 
And they all say, no, coach, let us go. Let us keep riding this. And sometimes you got to listen to them. And uh, so, you know, they, they felt good about it. And, and uh, he, I mean, he certainly, he's, he's a tough guy. You know, he, he, a couple times during the game he went in, but he's not going to stop going. You know, he's, uh, uh, he's, he's a force. And, uh, but those guys were in a, in a rhythm, in a groove, and that's why, why we, we just stayed with them and they wanted to. Coach, can you talk about the factor of Texas defense on, on your players and also the crowd? Well, you know, uh, at this level, you, you play in front of crowds. I mean, you know, we, you know, I mean, you think about the places that we go to play. I mean, you, you get used to it, and and the crowds. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know at this time of the year if crowds affect any team that much on the road. I, I really don't. I'm not sure because you've played enough games, and when it gets close like this, you really become oblivious. To the crowd, like, uh, and, I, and I'm being, I, I, for whatever reason, the good Lord's, I, I'm, I'm oblivious to crowds. I, even at our, we have, a, we had 20,000 fans in our building the other night playing Florida, and uh, we had that when we were playing LSU the, the game before, and I, I hardly hear them, but yet it is, it is loud, and I know it is, but it, you just go, and I think players do that at the end of the game. I don't think our players were anywhere. And if anything, when you, when we make a run like we did there at the end, it affects the other team, the home team, a lot because of their their fans maybe aren't as loud and they are sitting back. I mean, I felt that at our place before, you know, where everybody's on edge, like, are, are we going to win? Are we going to win? And but these guys have played so much basketball at a high level in in, in arenas where I'm just not sure it affects it. Like, like people might think, and you like to think that it doesn't because we talk about getting locked in, and I'm not going to say – I do think it um, it helps you at home. Like I, I, I can tell you the other night, we, we were down 13, 16 at home, and our crowd brought us back. They helped us. You know, once we got going, it helped us. So do I think it affected Florida in that situation? Maybe a little bit, but then it still got down to where both teams were just fighting their hearts out to get it done. But um, – we we like to be the kind of team that wherever we go that we we, we want to play in front of a big crowd. Anybody else? Glad it's over. You know what? Really and truly, Brian. I, I, I you know I, I wanted to win this basketball game. I know our team wanted. To, I know my guys wanted to win this game for me, and and I know that I know they did. And and I didn't talk to them about it. I I, I promise you, I did not do one thing different. We didn't do one thing different preparing for this game as we did for anybody else because I didn't want them to be too emotional about it. But, you know, we that's that's our family. We're together. And, uh, you know, Mike Schwartz on my staff, you know, he, he's been here. Like one of my coaches grew up here in Texas. So, the, But uh, I, don't, I don't think I could ever say I'm glad it's over when I've had a chance to see so many – beautiful, wonderful people that have been a big part of my life. And I'll see them here and some more when I leave here right now and might not see them again for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, I, I miss, I honestly miss seeing Leon Black here tonight. I miss Daryl Royal being here. You know, I, I talked to Mac, uh, I kidded with him. I said, if we could win the game, I'm going to walk in here with my, you on FaceTime and let you all, let you address the media, you know, but, uh, uh, I, I do miss all that. I miss Augie Garrido, you know. I mean, just I, I miss those guys. But uh, I saw Don. yeah, well, Don flew in early. Don, Don spent the afternoon. Don has been over to to the Knoxville bunch since I've been there. He's been there a bunch, and uh, I, you know, excited to see him more. You know, he just recently got remarried and married a North Carolina girl, and and uh, but he, he he's from the first time I met him, and I tell everybody I would never have ended up in Austin if it wasn't for Don Evans. He was the guy that when I walked out of that interview up at the Crescent Hotel, Delos put his arm on my neck and said, I want you to be our next basketball coach. Can you give me a decision? I said, I'll tell you tomorrow. And when I got on the plane, my wife simply said to me, you want your children growing up around people like Don Evans and Delos Dodds. And uh, he came in and he really took that meeting over that day. And and he's he has been a dear friend of mine. Uh, we you know we text every morning. Every morning we reach out and share devotionals. But uh, he's he's a he's a brother. There's just the job they were able to do on Santiago. Nobody's really done that to him. Well, you know what? They they did a good job. The other people have, but I don't know. Now he he has some shots. 
he should have shot the ball. I took him out and I said, hey, if you're not going to shoot the ball, you need to tell me. I said, hey, if you thought you were going to get wide open looks, you're not. You've been guarded like this all year. And he moved without the ball. But I, I don't know why he, uh, you know, we, we ran a play for him. And he had as good a look, Rob, as he's going to get any time. And why he went back to wanting to over, over dribble the ball, I don't know. And uh, but he did some other things by them taking him out. You know, he he got to, he picked up those fouls on those back screens inside where, you know, they weren't helping off of him. And but uh, he did he did turn down some shots that. Uh, but but again, they 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 play good defense. They don't just on Santi, but they they're they're a very very sound defensive team. I don't want to cut off anybody. Any more questions? Roz, how you doing, man? I think Roz, I think you have gotten better looking. I, 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 yeah. Have you been Have you been hibernating since the uh, COVID? I have. That's what it is. You know what it is? They call it. The only guy I know. Hey, they call it beauty sleep. That's what they call it. Yeah. But again, great seeing all you guys. I love you and, and a good and I years to come. I hope I'm back here and get to see you again. Take care and God bless.